You know something that I feel like is interesting rereading the Gospel of Mark? It's like realizing how much Jesus was that guy. Like literally from chapter zero to three, like I'm just right there right now. I'm realizing more and more how Jesus was that dude. And like how the Pharisees and all the other teachers was like, who is this man? Where he come from? Like what's up with him? Because when you think about it, like historically from the Old Testament to the New Testament, there was never deliverance that really happened for people. Like unclean spirits responding <gasps> under the unction and the authority of God, right? And that mm. in such a tangible way. Mm. Like so when Jesus came to do healings and started ministering to people, people was like, Oh, what is this? You know what I'm saying? So no wonder everybody was trying to bring their mama, their cousin, and this person and that person to him so that he could get they could get healed. But what I thought was so cool about Jesus, even after picking his disciples and ministering to people, like Jesus made sure that he was very much intentional about, about preaching. Because all he could have done was perform miracles, signs, and wonders, you know. But he wouldn't have advanced the kingdom of God. The people wouldn't have, have learned. They would have just walked away healed, delivered, and set free. So I thought it was interesting. Like, it's almost like a marketing strategy within the Gospels of how, you know, like, I'm going to provide this, not necessarily a service, but in a service in a way, to these people. Like, I'm going to heal, I'm going to deliver. But at the same time, I'm going to make sure that they get what they need. And more than just healing or delivering, which may be a desire and God's pleasure and delight to do, is I'm going to make sure that they get me, that they get teaching that will change their lives and I might be able to reconcile them unto the Lord. Because you could get healed in this lifetime, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be alive in his lifetime. You know what I'm saying? As far as eternal life. And I thought that was just so cool. Like, Jesus really was out here and people are like, who is this? Unclean spirits respond to him? What? No. Yes. He's that guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so powerful. But I love like the intentionality of Christ, you know? And it's like, I'm here and the, and the Pharisees are trying to validate what they know and see and what they've heard and stuff. And, you know, they still can't comprehend like who he is. Like, of what authority do you operate? Like, you do miracles, you perform healings, you're breaking tradition. Because like Jesus was literally up and coming Messiah or in my mind, up and coming artist. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, he's breaking through the mold and cutting through the industry in this regard, which would be like the Pharisees and the, um, the rigidity of traditionalism or, you know, the institutions that man has created, which spit on the very nature of God or disrespect and dishonor God in the most crazy ways. And it's like, yo, like Jesus was really that dude. Jesus was really that dude. But I thought like, that's really interesting reading the gospel of Mark. Like, wow, like Mark speaks about miracles, but I feel like I'm experiencing the miracle of Jesus. And I understand how the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and just the religious elect could be so perplexed by him. It's like, where did you come from? What are you doing? Who told you you could do that? How do you do that? You know? And it's like, you want to admit it or you want to believe it, but you know, you don't, you can't because it pushes you into a place of uncomfort, of discomfort and uncomfortability, you know? And it's like, it's a, it's an interesting space and an interesting place to be in, but it's all so beautiful and powerful. And I'm like, yo, like the gospel of Mark is really turning out to be something awesome. And it's so cool. And like, Jesus had time. Jesus had time to like sit with people, to teach people, and even get the, the Pharisees and Sadducees together in so many different ways, which is like, yo, like, that's crazy. But I just thought that was so interesting, like the marketing strategy of the Lord, because, you know, it all comes from God anyway. But just like, let me make sure you get Christ. Let me make sure you get God. Let me make sure that you know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And even thinking about it too, like John literally, I'm sorry, I'm a little congested. John literally came to prepare the way and like literally once John went away and he was in prison Jesus started preaching Jesus started moving Jesus started going on tour and like even how John foreshadowed Jesus path like from birth all the way up until his, his execution you know and like he experienced the Holy Spirit in the womb you know he got to baptize Jesus he got to preach the gospel and then once he got in prison, he was in prison. Then even Jesus, when his time had come, you know, he was taken captive into the authorities. And then ultimately, you know, he was crucified so on and so forth. But even then John had been beheaded before that, you know, but like, what an honor to go before the Lord, like your cousin, but the Lord of Lords and the Messiah. Like, isn't that crazy? It's just so interesting. Like when you think about the gospel in just an interesting way, I'm like, the power of Jesus and like I would be perplexed too like who is this person 
doing all this work. His name is spreading. He's, you know, performing miracles, healing bodies, like touching people. I think the part that got me was when he healed the leper. When I tell you, that thing touched me, because that was crazy. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, I found it. Y'all, in Mark chapter one, it says Jesus cleanses the leper. And the New King James Version says this. Read. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Mind you context, lepers were considered unclean. Can't nobody touch them. Can't nobody be close to them. Infectious, uh -huh. disease, yada, 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 yada. And literally right here in the next verse, it says, then Jesus uh -huh. moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him. That part right there and said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. But that part right there, it says, and touched him. What person do you know? What person do you know with leprosy that is infectious, that is contagious, that is will mark you as unclean, would be associated with that, would touch him, would literally touch him. Jesus could have spoke a word and healed his body, but that person battling with leprosy, I don't even know how long they probably went without experiencing human touch, without being hugged, without experiencing affection and the physical interaction of a person. And Jesus and all of his deity and all of his power touched him, touched him and said, I am willing to be cleansed, healed him on the spot. But the first touch that he got to God in such a long time was from the Messiah. Like how powerful is that? Like beyond your sickness, beyond the illness, beyond the thing that makes you separable from people. Like the Lord does not care and he's willing and he's bold enough to interject himself into the middle of it and bring you closer to him and reconcile you back to him and really give you healing and clean you up and restore you to the rightful place where you should be. Like if that is not enough to make your heart leap for joy, I don't know what will. I really don't know what will. But I just want to share that because I'm like, this is what I'm learning as I'm reading the Gospel of Mark. You know, I'm on like chapter four now. But I'm just like, this is so interesting to me. Like, Jesus is really that guy. Jesus is really that guy. And I see it now, like, from a cultural standpoint. Like, when you think about how he just showed up and was doing all this miraculous stuff out the woodworks, and everybody's like, where'd you come from? Like, you know, it's just, it's baffling to me because I think sometimes we can read the Bible and not recognize how practical or how realistic it can be or these stories can be and are. You know, it just seems like it's so far removed from us or so far away you know it's just like we can kind of just make it seem like it's a fairy tale or something but like no that was real life and like thinking about it in today's times it's like i can literally see like jesus would be all over the shade room he'd be all over spiritual world he'd be all on cnn he'd be all over msnbc fox 5 he'd be everywhere he'd be everywhere although the people would probably try to we think about like the media source they would try to contain it and 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 dilute and reduce like how the Pharisees and all the other people are trying to do, but it's just such an interesting thought process. But I just wanted to share that with y'all. Like it's crazy. Like when you realize like Jesus is really that guy. Crazy, right? Crazy. But that's all. That's one through three. I'm probably gonna do another recap soon. But I just thought that was too good not to share. So there's that. But I don't know. I'm gonna talk to y'all soon.